This is a message to all my supporters of this podcast. I'm introducing a new supporters program. You can contribute a small amount as a one-off payment to show your love for this podcast. Thank you in advance for all your contributions. To make sure millions of people are getting paid on time and in compliance, ADP is staying on top of each new piece of legislation. So when it comes down to it, ADP isn't just a payroll and HR company. We're the company that helps you navigate complexity. Learn more at ADP.com. This is the Absolute Business Mindset Podcast, hosted by Mark Haywood. I am a corporate employee with an entrepreneurial mindset. This podcast will help and support you with new ideas about business. These are my thoughts, ideas and comments. Today, we're talking about what makes me happy in relation to business. Hi everyone, uh, this is the Absolute Business Mindset Podcast again, and uh, here are my thoughts on how, or maybe a personal reason of why I love business and why it makes me happy, and what we're going to do today is we're going to go through my points and hopefully inspire you, um, hopefully make you believe that uh, business is something that should be pursued, uh, if there's anyone out there that isn't in that mindset, and also give you a deeper understanding of what inspires me and why hopefully that should uh, resonate with you and um, hopefully you can give me some good comments about um, what you thought about my reasons for loving business and how it makes me happy right so <clears throat> I'm going to talk specifically about my business so it's a tech um, consultancy business uh, working for a big four um, accountancy firm um, now these are the reasons that, that are important to me now, first things first is I'm a people person. Um, I like being around people. I like working with people. I like being in people's company. And uh, the team, there's always a team that I work for. And so um, it's one of those things that I think some people uh, in tech world are more on the side of introverted and uh, code centric and, and a developer. Um and then there's also the business side of the people as well, which is what I fit into. Um, and the reason why I enjoy the people is because I enjoy the mixture of sort of business minded people with equally the the analytical, the the sort of deep dive being ability to be able to go into subjects deeply uh, from the developers. So um, it's a nice blend. It gives you uh, different people in your team. Some are more analytical and some are more uh, outgoing and sort of <clears throat> like doing demos or like doing being a uh, in front of people uh, and, and client facing etc. So, so for me it's important to have that balance in my uh, job and, and in, in my business and, and that makes me happy so and, and and leading on from being a people person and being involved with people it's it's about building relationships so this is really important whether it's internal or external you need to be able to, to build up a relationship with your client or your or its colleague um, or boss because it's important to be able to um there's certain key skills that i think um, some people have and some people master and some people just don't have and that is a building a relationship is something that takes time like if you're building a relationship with your girlfriend uh, it's not done in one event and that's why things like business development where you're trying to cross sell or sell to new clients it takes a while to convince them that what you're servicing, what your service that you provide is actually worth uh, buying. So these things are not done very quickly. So I think there was there's an expectation with some people that um, everything is done in one, one handshake and one conversation. And you sit there and you tell them how great you are and they go, yes, I'll buy all of your products and services just doesn't happen like that it's an evolution so there might be a, 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 a pivotal important key issue that they need to face and that's what you that's what you leverage first of all so then building relationships it's like in a way it's a bit like your girlfriend you then speak to them regularly build trust 
build uh, strength in, in your relationship with each other and and, and, and and answer their problems, deal with their issues. And that might be something that you provide. It might be something that maybe in, in, in sort of our sort of business that another team provides. Um, but it's all about servicing your clients and being able to build strong, robust relationships so they they keep with your products and um, they keep within your company's uh, services. So I really enjoy that. I really enjoy the satisfaction of, say, selling a client product A and, um, you, for example, I've got a, a client, you, We I have a six-monthly review and in those six-monthly review, we might tell them new new ideas that we've got or new services, but equally it might just be building the relationship that, that's on a firm footing for the future. So point two and point three come in together. So it's working, serving clients. That is the essence of business. And um, whoever uh, wants to get involved in business, you need to be able to uh, work and serve your clients. So serving your client is building the relationship, but equally thinking about what they said about an area of issue or something they want to talk to you about and that might be bringing in other experts it might be bringing in um, other people in your team to be able to help them so so that is incredibly important and should not be dismissed because it is in the essence i've got three key points of of business um, from an employee's point of view which i'm going to talk about later on but the biggest thing for working in business is if you're in the client service industry, you need to be able to work and serve your clients. OK, so let's flip it on its side and uh, the opposite, which is your colleagues. So this is important. This is very important. The reason why this is so important is to have good colleagues, people you trust, people you enjoy working with, is because you spend more time with your work colleagues than you spend with your family. Now, <clears throat> for the younger guys, that, that might be a bit of a revelation for us older people, let's say. Um, that's not that big a surprise for me. I, I realised that quite a long time ago, and, and you've got to work with people that that benefit you, that make you a better person. Um, I think it's it's, in, it's sometimes undervalued because you think, oh, you've got to deal with your clients. But actually, you've got to go in and talk to people and build relationships with them. And and, and colleagues are incredibly important. Some 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 people might like the ability to be able to go out for a beer with someone. Um, it might be more social events which might attract people to companies. Uh, the company I work for do regular nights out. Don't go to all of them personally. Um, I don't value that as the main or the only reason why you would work at a company. Um, I would much prefer to be able to have a good chat with someone over a cup of coffee in the day. Uh, not necessarily a beer at night, but equally um, it is there available socialising. And socialising often gives people um, reference points and you're building relationships. The, the sort of old school way, like beyond millennials, people who, who are a little bit older, not, not a millennial, will, will still remember the business. A lot of business was done in the pub um, in the 90s, especially. Uh, mid to late 90s um, I personally did some work experience when I was 18, 19 18 and 19 and that there was a lot of pub journeys at lunch times after work and um, and, and it, it, it was a place where you socialised and worked with people and you worked with service clients over pub a beer and and, and, and go over an idea um, that now is reduced dramatically so anyone that went through the 08 09 2008 09 
uh, recession, depression, really, uh, it, 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 everything changed in that period um, and um, a lot less business was done in pubs and more of it was done in the office and over a cup of coffee, over a chat there, rather than having a reliance on socialising as the main vehicle of uh, business. So um, still potential for socialising, so if that's something you like, then it, you can definitely build that into your um, into your day, into your um, into your working relationships, but I think there's less reliance on that, which I think is a good thing. Um, so if you want, so it's just to give you a, a high level understanding what it's like to work in a corporate, this is not necessarily makes me happy about it, it's just to sort of give you an insight into it. So it's the three P's. So you've got to understand three things. You've got to understand the politics, which is sometimes a dirty word, but it's it's fact you have to be able to work with people and, uh, and 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 work the politics you need to understand the processes so the processes are delivering things services deliverables whatever it is um internal processes it can be as well um and the third p is understanding people so i think working in a corporate environment you need to be able to understand people even if they uh, they say that the the um the people who employ other people either employ people they like or they relate to themselves, depending if they're a narcissist or whether they are a people person, I suppose. But essentially, um, people, people employ people that they like. Uh, that doesn't, that's not, that shouldn't be any great surprise. Um, so that's why being personable, being sociable, being a good guy um, or woman is actually very valuable in the corporate environment. So just to cover that again, you've got to understand the politics, so how to leverage people, how to work with people, how to convince people, persuade people, um, influence senior people. So you've got to understand the politics. You've got to understand the processes. So in corporates, there are processes everywhere, whether it's filling out an online form to because you've been ill or uh, uh, whether it's, um, which doesn't happen as much now. You used to have them when I start, first started, you had to do a, an online form when you were ill. But I think you do something, I've been ill for quite some time. Um, and uh, and so you've got to understand the processes and then understand the people. So people and politics are different. People is just being able to work with people. Politics is more the leveraging side of it. So if you want to work in a corporate and or you are and you're struggling, Think of it in those three three P's. We'll be back after a quick break. Hi, I'm Alex, the host of X Health Show. Meet the future of healthcare. Think X Men. That's X Health. Actual superheroes behind programming living cells to cure cancer once and for all. Tech that detects preterm delivery in seconds. Brain computer interface or apps that employ AI to match you, your disease, with the best treatment. X Health Show brings to you visionaries who push the boundaries of healthcare from Switzerland, the heart of Europe, and the most innovative innovative country in the world. Let me introduce you to their startups. Head to X Health Show, meet the future of healthcare. Happy to greet you there. So I've got here as my next two points are the challenge to be profitable and the relentless pursuit of profit and satisfaction. So I'm going to sort of meld these two together. So to work in a business, you need to be profitable. That it, that makes the business more successful because you deliver higher revenues, higher profitability, and higher profitable uh, businesses are the larger, better, faster. So I would say that is um, definitely important. And I, I said relentless because... Every day, in a way, you need to think about how to make yourself profitable, whether you're reducing costs, which is very unsexy, unglamorous to be able to reduce expenses and reduce costs. But it can be very, very important and um, shouldn't be underestimated or um, go on offense and, and, and try and make yourself more profitable by, by selling more things. Um, invest in the 80-20 principle. 20% of your client clients are, are your 80% profitable 
clients. So you really should be investing in those 20% because they're your most profitable clients. Um, so it's relentless because it is every day and it is every week, every month, every year. In the corporate world, you are assessed, you are evaluated every year on your profitability. Um, every month, we're, we've, we're given reports on the profitability of the business and as an individual as well. So it's relentless, it's never ending, and you just keep on working that way. The other thing I like about a corporate environment is that it never ends. Um, rarely do teams completely crumble into nothing. Um, it's always evolving. So there might be people leaving. Uh, it might be people leaving the firm, as I am, as you probably have heard, that I'm leaving my company of 12 years. Um, but the com- the business will still continue. There will still be that business. There will still be the products. There will still be the services. You adapt. It's adapt or die, basically, to use a... Uh, um, a, a, a coined phrase um, you do need to just keep on evolving and that sometimes means stepping up it's some it often often some of the best ways of being successful in a corporate environment is someone leaving because that then gives you an open space to be able to step in do their role and do the role better hopefully and that can make a big 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 difference um, so, um, yeah, and so that's really, uh, I would say, important uh, to understand that nothing ever stays still in a corporate environment. Sometimes things move slower than maybe a startup where decisions are made faster. But I would say equally, it is important to understand that you're, you're always evolving, you're always changing. So the tech industry that I work in... Um, I would say is a blend of sort of West Coast tech versus accountants sensibility is how I described it. And so you've got you've got the tech angle and you've got the, the, the essence of profitability or the essence of a calculator, a tracker, whatever it is that you've got as your tool. But the accountant's sensibility is that you do need to make it profitable. It, it, it relies less on you being able to... Um, uh, you need to be able to account for your actions, whether it's profitability, whether it's um, uh, decision making, etc. So um, that's one of the reasons why I like what I do. It's not just it's not just uh, unprofitable companies um, getting funds to be able to get <coughs> go to the next level. <coughs> Excuse me. It has the accountant sensibility as well, which I enjoy. So. So that's good. Um, equally, we've talked a lot about evolution and evolving of the business. There are projects that you work on in, in my environment so that there is something very enjoyable out of having a start, middle and end of a, of a project. So, um, so that's we've talked about projects before and about the importance and the value that, that they are. And so I would definitely say that is a good thing. Um, there's a mixture of roles and responsibilities. So the, in, in, in my business, there might be a bit of testing. There might be a bit of business, a bit of business development, a bit of client relationship. There, there is variety within a, a very narrow field. So um, it, it's, it's, it's a really good environment to be able to work in. So I would say um, that makes me happy. And now we come to the, the, the big three, the key points of what makes me happy okay so this is this is the big reveal the three points are one of the most important things about being happy in business is your salary what you are earning now let's just not cover it up with anything else the salary matters it's important to earn enough for your family for yourself for whoever but you need to be able to earn the salary that you feel is warranted, what you value to be, and therefore it is important. So that's my first point. The second point is your colleagues. I think colleagues are really important. As I said, you spend more time with them than your family. It's incredibly important to have a trustworthy, good, strong relationship with those people. And then the third point, which is kind of 
point 3A and 3B is the role and responsibilities that you've got there. So I think it's important to be able to have a balance between the roles that you enjoy and the roles that you need to do. Um, sometimes you do roles you don't really enjoy that much, but you do need to do those sorts of things as well. So it is important. So that, that's what I would say is important for you when you're considering whether you want to work for a corporate organisation. And, and if you do, the three things that you need to, to, to enjoy it and be happy. Salary, colleagues, roles and responsibilities. Right, that is the end of the podcast. So I've been contacted, um, uh, people on, on YouTube have been saying what's actually in my uh, my my bookshelf behind me that everyone can see. So that's up there. Uh, if you're on the podcast, I'm sorry you don't know this, but I'll give you a bit of an insight as well. So uh, this is actually a mixture of uh, my wife's and my uh, my books up here. Um, there are some of my favourites are Neil Stevenson's Quicksilver, a big chunky book but really interesting fiction. Uh, there's also Catch Twenty Two, uh, which I would advise as a fiction book is really really good. Um, and then I've got a couple of Ian Banks books which are very very interesting as well. Um, as as you've probably heard, a lot of the books now that I look at and listen to are, are listened to. And just to give you a bit of a flavour of those as well, I um, thought it might be interesting to, to hear some of the books that I would definitely promote and recommend. Uh, one is Principles by Ray Dalio. I know that's sort of been discussed, been talked about uh, a few times, but that is an excellent, excellent book. Um, maybe one that you might not have heard of is uh, is Let's Talk About about uh let me look at uh, black box thinking by matthew side that's a very very good book i really enjoyed that as well um i'm trying to get some of them that are not necessarily on the top of everyone else's list because you you've, you've heard of all of the other ones probably um and which one there's one other one which i wanted to just show you talk to you about was the motivational myth by Jeff Hayden. So there's a couple of really good non-fiction books um, that I would advise you all to uh, listen to, read. Very, very interesting. Um, and, uh, and 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 uh, so that's that's just a bit of an insight into my previous fiction reading, and then my current uh, sort of non-fiction business books that I've been listening to because that's the best way that I find um, absorbing in new information um, so that's very important for me um, hopefully you enjoy those books so um, just to, so call to action is I want you to go out and speak to somebody and tell them about this podcast I want you to also Join me on Instagram. So I'm looking to expand my uh, details on Instagram. So it's Mark J Hayward um, on Instagram. I would love you to join me on Instagram and listen uh, to my uh, posts and look at my pictures. Um, would be really, really pleased if we can get those numbers up. Um, that would be absolutely fantastic. Um, just so on Twitter as well, uh, Mark Hayward 169 um, YouTube. Um, all my other videos, which are all are below, um, which I would advise you all to look at. Some of the early stuff um, on my phone is slightly different. And then also you got all the podcasts in the last four months, five months or so that are all on there as well. So you can listen to them as well. And, and the podcast, which is the Absolute Business Mindset podcast. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, any feedback would be appreciated. Um, so, uh, yes, by all means, anytime, give me some, drop me some feedback. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much, guys.